thought, why do bad things happen to good people? And they do happen, don't they? I saw one of my birthdays listed today in Fulton for the Reggie Garber. Uh, I fished with him Friday. Matter of fact, I was talking to him when the truck driver called from uh, McAllen. <laughs> uh, and Brother Reggie, I'll tell you a little bit about his history. He, he's a member of the church here. But he looked at me real serious like today and he, uh, on Friday and he, and, and he said, I'm going to ask you to tell the Lord I'm not Job. Think about that a minute. I'm going to ask you to tell the Lord I'm not Job. In other words, the Lord picked on Job and he thought he was picking on him. Brother Reggie's wife, y'all remember Vicky? Uh, that sang for us, and, and we got to sing them one day. <laughs> we got about five songs out of her. But uh, she's in an institution at this point. But Brother Reggie, and get this, had to give his wife a divorce before he could get her any help. They would not help her. He begged everybody to help, and they would not help uh, give her any assistance. So he got her, gave her a divorce in order for her to get uh, mental and physical treatment. Uh, it's sad to say, and she's off up North Texas somewhere in an uh, institution. Brother Reggie rides a bicycle to work, and the lady that he's taking care of, an elderly lady that's unable to take care of himself, and she fell again this week. She fell last week and fell this week. And he's having to run with a bicycle about two miles to check on her and then back. He, he's worked for the Whataburger down here for the last 20 some odd years. But anyway, uh, keep Brother Reggie in your prayers because he was feeling like Job. <laughs> it goes along with our thoughts. Why bad things happen to good people? Uh, let's read it. Luke chapter 13 in the first five verses. Now that was present at that season some that told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering them said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners, were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. All those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem, that was the tower that fell uh, in Siloam, as things do, accidents do happen. And 18 people lost their life because of tithes that fell on them. And the Lord said, Do you think they were centered above all men that grew up in Jerusalem? And he said, I tell you, no, they weren't the worst sinners. They but except you repent. And again, he repeats himself, You shall all likewise perish. All right, let's begin with a true modern-day story. There's a family that I read about some years ago now. By the name of Cord and Celia McRae. A little boy named Josh was two years old. And things began to go backwards for them. Cord lost his job. A few days later, his wife grew ill and died. And Cord was left with a little boy and no job. And they've been living a life at least consistent with that of a Christian. But things began to go backwards for them. 
and uh, they needed uh, at least court needed some encouragement and uh, he began of course to blame himself for what had happened to him he cuts on the TV and he hears one of the evangelists preach that bad things happened because of lack of faith and prayer and his own pastor preached that suffering came because he was guilty of some kind of sin. Now, folks, I, I gotta warn you, we can't judge people. That's what happened to Job's friends, wasn't it? You remember Job's so called friends when Job was there uh, suffering in all his agony? It was a grief of losing all ten of his children at one time. And Job's friends come along and say, Job, you may as well confess to us because we know you did something wrong. We just don't know what it was. And folks, when you got friends like that, you don't need any enemies. You got enough. But throughout the book of Job, you'll find Job's friends accusing him at least three of those friends, so-called friends. But I want to point out to you today that sometimes people do suffer because of their own personal sin. They do suffer. Now, Miriam, that I want to mention to you, call your attention to, if you would, look in the, back to your paper, in Numbers chapter 12, Miriam was a sister of Moses was she not, and Aaron was her, Moses' brother. All right, it says, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married, now this is Moses, he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they're getting on their brother said, Man, you should have married that woman from Ethiopia. Now, no word did it say this woman was black. Doesn't matter the color of skin, does it? But I've heard some point out that she was black. All people in Ethiopia are not black. Some are, most are. But anyway, Moses is brother and sister. Can't you just see that in the family? Look, look who's married. Moses, he's wrong. Y'all got any siblings like that that won't tell you what to do? It's not always right. We all have siblings, don't we? Uh, I buried my only sister last year, and a little over years ago now. And bless her heart, she was always telling me what to do. Always. But here's a case where punishment was rendered. All right. Verse 9 says, The anger of the Lord was kindled against both uh, Aaron and Miriam. And uh, he departed. Verse 10 says, And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. God sent a case of leprosy to attack Miriam because Miriam judged her brother and got on her brother about whom he chose for his wife. Well, you got to be careful about <laughs> monkey with what the Lord told somebody else to do. you got to let, let them run their own life, don't you? Can't you just see that, the sister and Miriam? But she got in trouble over it. Now, nobody here likes the word cancer, do they? But in Bible days, leprosy was the same thing or equal or maybe uh, worse than cancer. Because leprosy was a, an ungodly, uh, an untimely death, usually with the, with the limb falling off of the body while the person was still alive. Leprosy was awful. But here, Miriam is attacked by leprosy. 
Now, we know the Lord knew what he was doing, but he taught them a lesson, didn't he? And that calls for repentance, doesn't it? But I want to say to you again, my own got into it for complaining to Moses. Now, I've always said and before about complaining, don't be complaining. I told the Bible the other day, he asked, who cut the bush out front? And I said, don't you be complaining about how it's cut. You, know, you, you complaining somebody for not cutting it. But don't be complaining, get, get in trouble, of course. <laughs> I've ever seen people in church they go complaining about little old two bits and stuff and they make a, a mountain out of molehill. Now, <laughs> but if I was a bit, he never really complained. I just told him I, I <laughs> don't complain about how it was done or the fact that if I don't do something, you complain at me. When I do something, don't complain about it. <laughs> And I use him as a question. <laughs> but do you understand the point I want to make? We've got to be careful about complaining, period. Uh, all right. Myron got into trouble. And Moses got into trouble, didn't he? When he fell to enter. He, uh, God put a curse on him that he could not enter Canaan because he struck the rock. So likewise, Moses suffered as well as his sister Myron. Jerusalem was destroyed because of idolatry. Now think about that a moment. We live in an idolatrous time. The year 2018 is a time of idolatry. Somebody said adultery. I said idolatry. Adultery falls under that, doesn't it? But idolatry is everywhere. People have created their own gods. I was over off of West Hammer this week and I looked up at a sign up there and it says, the Church of Scientology. Y'all ever heard of the Church of Scientology from Hollywood? L. Ron Hubbard. As a matter of fact, they even had his name under the Church of Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard, the founder. Well, I'm happy to tell you that 2,000 years ago before uh, L. Ron Hubbard got here, the church had already been founded, the true church. L. Ron Hubbard, one of the few, or one of the many, that's come on and had established an idolatry church. But again, people do suffer because of their waywardness. King David is the best example that I can think of in all the scriptures. The Lord said, you reap what you sow, didn't he? Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God not more, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth into the flesh shall in the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth into the spirit shall reap life everlasting, right? We reap what we sow. David has sown a lot. And he reaped a lot. His own children turned against him. In fact, I was looking at the old book this week and I pointed out to Linda, I said, look at this name. I said, you just don't see people naming their child a biblical name like this person that died with. His name was Joseph Absalom was his middle name. How many folks no, he absolutely was. He was David's son. The word Ab means against. Salam means peace. The name itself means against peace. 
Why would a mother name a child Absalom? Bible name. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all the other one. You're right back as a football player. Was named Second Corinthians. That was his real name. Second Corinthians. <laughs> and one, uh, one Ephesians, Bartlett. The Ephesians, you know, is the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. But Ephesians, Bartlett was a, a football player. The brother, King David, suffered a lot from his son Absalom. Absalom got himself an army. And he tried to have David, his father, killed so he could be the king. And all this happened because of David's adultery and sin. But we're wrong to conclude that suffering comes only because of one sin. And we'll go back to Job. Well, Job suffered about everything you can think of. He'd worked all his life and the Lord had blessed him and he'd gotten rich and had a, a, a fine place to live, had ten kids. And all of a sudden, he lost everything he had, his wealth, but moreover his family, his children, and even his wife. Folks, you don't need to count this kind of wife that Job had. She, she said to Job, go ahead and curse God and die. Job hadn't done anything wrong. Here last year, Sunday morning, down below San Antonio, a little, little place called Sutherland Springs. You all know what I'm talking about. This maniac goes in down with the, the assault weapons and he kills, how many, 25, 26 church members or people that were in service that Sunday morning. And everybody in there had some kind of an injury at least that was left other than those that died for no reason. And we'd ask the question, what did they do wrong? They spoke some of these people were little kids. And we can't blame them for doing something wrong. The point being, real people still suffer. And Job's friends had two ideas about sin. They concluded that all suffering results from sin. They also concluded that God punished each act equally. Not so. But as we read in the scriptures of the Gospels, we read the story, if you would, in John chapter 9, let's read those first uh, four verses there, John chapter 9, in the middle of your page. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Jesus' disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who, who was going to blame? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work, must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The Lord knew that man was going to be there way back on him before he got here. And the Lord used this event to get people's attention. 
Everybody knew that this man was blind. For years and years he sat there. From blind from his birth. But he was there because the Lord knew. But he was going to pass by. And was going to heal this man. And likewise in our text, when the tower of Siloam fell, on those Galileans. And they killed 18 people. Was it anything those 18 had done? No, sir. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You ever heard that expression before? Well, it's a fact. Not anything that they individually had done. And we look at Paul and all his sufferings. He suffered a, a bunch of things because of his testimony from the Lord. Y'all know that he was shipwrecked. He was in prison. He was hungry. He was beaten and left for dead. And eventually, in the Mamertine prison there in Rome that still exists, they have a place marked there, if you ever go down into the uh, places that are beneath there, and you can visit what's called down the Mamertine prison. And therefore, Paul was beheaded because he would not renounce Christ as Savior. So wasn't anything that Paul did wrong that made him suffer is what Paul did right that made him suffer. Bad things do happen to good people for a good reason. We read about Job. You ever tried to uh, wonder how, over the years gone by how many millions have read about Job? And the fact that Job did not cry out against God or blame God. Millions now know about Job. Look at Israel. And as they escaped Egypt, and the Lord poured in the Red Sea, and we have a testimony then of God's hand and God's power, absolutely nothing that our Lord cannot and will not do for his children. Now, Hollywood made the parting of the Red Sea looked easy. I like to see it when they play the Ten Commandments and Charles and Heston plays there and they, and they separate the sea. And they weren't even close to what, how God actually did it. And Israel went over on dry ground. Amen. Some four million people. Can you imagine Houston getting up right now and hey folks, let's get out of here? What a, <laughs> a situation it would be and four million people trying to leave at one time. And they got off out there and not far from the Red Sea and they said, why did God bring us out here? Why didn't he just kill us in Egypt? But folks, they saw the hand of God and we read about it today, don't we? But I tell you what he did, it made Moses authentic. It made God's authentic. Because they spoke of the Moses, Moses is God. You remember the failure of addressing uh, Moses and he said, Moses, you God have done this and have done that. Your God has killed my 
my child, the firstborn. No, God didn't do that. He warned you to let Israel go. He was going to play a good part in that, didn't he? And failed. But it put fear in the hearts of the Canaanites because they saw what God did every morning they would go out and there was manna from heaven angels food and all they had to do was pick it up he didn't have a freezer by the way remember they were traveling don't think they had too many freezers in the world in those days did they but they were traveling back up north to the land of Canaan from Egypt. And there God fed them daily. On the sixth day, he put out enough food for two days, didn't he? So they could observe the Sabbath. Well, people saw all this. They were witnesses of this. But I want to come quickly to this fact. Bad things do happen to us today. The Lord has not changed his plans. And I've got a key verse in a moment I want to share with you. Much tribulation will come. If you would look at the last two verses on your paper. Acts chapter 14. Verse 21. And one day had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. What they say? It says they, they must joy. It says much tribulation. Amen. And folk, the Lord tells us over and over again that if we follow him we're going to be persecuted. He said, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And brother, if you, or if you take a stand for what's right, there's a price to pay. The Lord told us ahead of time that through much tribulation we would enter into the kingdom of God. I hope if you want to see the tribulation that comes, you turn to the scripture of Revelation where we have the days of Jacob's troubles, the days of the great tribulation will come. Folk, I don't think you're too far around the corner. But we're the comfort our brothers and sisters in Christ when they do come. But all of us up in here, good part, is temporary. You realize that? Everything you see today including me is temporary. showed Linda Brees on Facebook, a couple of good friends of mine that I went to school with, posted on Facebook a picture yesterday of the movie star down here, James Drury. Y'all remember him? Y'all seen him on those Western movies? And he's at my uh, friend's house visiting with him, and they showed a picture that he had made 30 years ago. And now... Now, he looks old to me, folks, and that's he looks old. But he's, we're all temporary. We can't stay. This old body wears out. We have an eternity to the best. I have a little paper in my pocket. 
you get old, you do that, these kind of things. But I showed that Bobby this morning. My family, there was 11 kids, five mothers. My mother had four sisters. They actually had five, but there were five women. And all those siblings, we, we grew up close together. We were like brothers and sisters rather than cousins, first cousins. But I started with my brother, who's the oldest of those 11 grandchildren. His name's still there without a check back. But then I've got Burnham, Lorraine, Velma, myself, Floyd, Inga, Patty, Jerry, Brenda, and Mike. My brother, the oldest one, doesn't have a check, but he's still living. But there's only four that doesn't have checks by them. But look, at, <laughs> there's a time for a check for any one of those, isn't it? Can't get around it. The best part about it, we're going to check out of this place and check into another place. But we're going to dwell with the Lord forever. Right? So there won't be any more checks, right? <laughs> Bad things do happen to good people. The worst thing that could happen happened to our Savior, and that was the suffering of the cross, the crucifixion itself. He did that that he might manifest his love toward us. He paid the price that you and I could not pay. He paid for our sins. I've said it again, and, and I'll say it again until the Lord takes me on. He doesn't require double payment. They were paid for one time in the blood of the only begotten Son of God. So it's not the blood of Jesus plus, is it? It's the blood of Jesus covers all of our sins. Doesn't matter what you are. The Lord said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not part, but all.